the term home health and home care is interchangeable. When people think of home care, they think of care at home. They think of someone coming to the house, helping with bathing, cleaning, laundry. It could be anything that's home care. But sometimes people also think of home care as a nurse coming out and going and doing therapy and doing any type of care at home, clinical care. Then you also have another term in there, hospice care. It's another type of care at home. So there's so many different things that can confuse families. And we're going to clarify that. Let's talk about it right now. I don't know about you, but I love a good story. So we're going to take someone, we're going to call her Betty, and Betty is going to take us through a journey of home health, hospice care, home care, and we're going to explain everything uh, through the life of Betty. So Betty needs home health. Betty is 65 years old. She just recently got diagnosed with congestive heart failure, and she needs help with medications, understanding this new diagnosis, making sure that she's monitoring her weight and, and making sure she's eating healthy and all of those things. So the doctor says, you need home health. So what happens is the doctor writes an order, followed up with a progress note, which is notes regarding the last time that that doctor saw that patient. This is home health, skilled care because Betty needs someone who is a nurse who understands the diagnosis of CHF, congestive heart failure, and everything that it entails to help educate Betty. There are a few criteria that Betty needs in order to make sure she qualifies for home health. Number one, she must be homebound. So what that means is it's hard for her to leave the house. She may have a walker, she may have a wheelchair, she may have something that she uses an assisted device to help her get in and out of the house or go places. And it's hard for her. It's taxing effort. And she has to have a skilled need. So based off of what we talked about, she has a skilled need that the doctor saw. This places her in the category of a Medicare certified agency that can take care of her. And those Medicare certified agencies that are home health, they are actually contracted with Medicare to provide those types of services if someone falls within those guidelines. So it seems like right now, Betty falls within those guidelines, but Betty has Blue Cross Blue Shield as her insurance as a Medicare Advantage plan. So now that home health has to have a contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield in order to take care of Miss Betty. Now, if Betty had traditional Medicare, all Medicare certified agencies take Medicare because they're they're contracted with Medicare and that's how they actually get started. So they're good. Actually, every home health wants to take Medicare because there's no issues. Unfortunately, with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, those carriers are the ones that kind of dictate how many visits and how many frequencies have to uh, be done by the home health. So then Betty is now needing home health. So the doctor writes the order, sends it to the home health. That's in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield for her. And then they go out and then they start care. They start their care and it's usually a 60 day stint. And you've got nurses that come out. If the doctor writes an order for therapy, a therapy can come out. And they then distinguish and create a care plan for Miss Betty for 60 days. And the frequency all depends on how much she needs help and how, how well she's doing in her acuity. Uh, so that is home health. In a nutshell, that's home health. Okay, now let's talk about home care. So home care is now Betty paying someone to come and help her while she's there. So M Medicare or Blue Cross Blue Shield in Betty's case has certain criteria that has to be met during those 60 days. And it's inter intermittent or acute. It's not supposed to be forever. And unfortunately, and currently, uh, the industry the insurances, they don't pay for someone to sit at the bedside or help or do all those things consistently. Uh, usually that has to come out of pocket. And so home care is initiated. So home care is usually you find someone, an organization or a company that is home care, or they also call it personal care interchangeably. Find an agency, and you can interview them. And you basically say, hey, I need someone to come and sit with me or help me or help me take groceries. Uh, depends on the agency, how many uh, minimum hours uh, they will say, hey, 
I can have someone come out to see you three times a week, consistently six hours, eight hours a day. That's where you're paying someone to come and help or help them go to the grocery, run errands. It's basically your assistant or your companion to help you through uh, seasons in life. But also, this is also where long-term care insurance comes into play. So long-term care insurance is something that people pay into over a lifetime. And then when they need it in these situations, specifically for healthcare reasons, they can draw into that bank and then pay a home care company or even pay an assisted living facility monthly to make sure you're assisted and helped during that time. That's the home care example uh, for Betty. So Betty's needing someone to come sit with her for a couple hours, three times a week. Betty's going to interview that company, reach out to them, pay, and then basically she controls how many hours or she wants to start or stop. It's all controlled uh, through cash or through long-term care insurance. So that is home care. All right, so let's talk about hospice care. Now Betty is not doing so well. And now her heart is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And she's going back and forth to the hospital so much. And it's hard for her to just keep having good quality of life. Now that same doctor says, I think you may need hospice care. And writes an order stating, evaluate and treat. Now the doctor, the internal medicine doctor, cardiologist, pulmonologist, whoever it may be, anyone that's a doctor or a DO or a nurse practitioner can write that order. And they send it to a hospice. So the interesting thing about hospice that's different compared to what we talked about before with home health is that if someone is 65 and years older, if they have the Medicare Advantage plan, that Medicare Advantage plan literally goes away, right? And the only thing that then becomes a major payer for hospice is traditional Medicare. So even if that hospice is not in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield, as long as they have Medicare and have a Medicare Advantage plan, then Medicare will cover the hospice care. Uh, now, if you're younger than 65, then that hospice does have to have a contract with that insurance in order to take care of um, Miss Betty. Uh, and so what happens is that doctor writes the order, sends it to the hospice, and the hospice sends out someone to evaluate. So now, just like home health, even if the doctor sends you uh, uh, the order, or sends an agency, you have the right to also interview, right? So we talked about home health. So even if the doctor says, hey, here's a home health, you, I want you to go here, or you need to go here, you can say, okay, great, let me do my research, though. Let me interview this one before I start services. It's the same thing, like if you are hungry and you wanted to literally eat dinner, you could say, hey, like, I, I want Chick-fil-A right now. Or no, I can have Chick-fil-A or maybe I'll have Jimmy John's or maybe I'll have Subway. Like you got to choose. Same thing with home health, the same thing with hospice, same thing with home care. Uh, the doctor will recommend, right, based on their experience, but you also have the right to choose to do your research as well. And I, we always tell families to make sure you choose and you got to feel comfortable with someone who's coming into your home. So I, I digress. Let's talk about now that the doctor sends that hospice order. The hospice then comes out and does an evaluation. They see if you meet this criteria. There's special criteria that, that make it to where someone is eligible for hospice, just like we talked about with home health. It's different, but it's the same. It has to be certain criteria based off of their diagnosis to make them eligible for hospice. So the nurse goes out, looks at what's going on with uh, Miss Betty, with uh, specifically for her cardiovascular disease that's happening to her. Say she qualifies, boom, she's good to go. Now there's a course of action that happens. So usually the doctor will say it's six months or less to live. So now the hospice will admit and walk Miss Betty through a program to make sure she's comfortable uh, looking at her medications, going over uh, if she needs DME, which is durable medical equipment, supplies, and continents. You have a team now, nurses, aides, chaplains, social workers, it's a whole team. And the goal is to keep her comfortable at home, to not have her going back and forth to the hospital. One of the biggest things that we talk about a lot is in hospice, can you continue to treat? Uh, it's different, it's a different type of comfort. It's making sure that you're comfortable and stable uh, at the end of life. So if you want to watch more or learn more about hospice, 
click on that video, the link in below, and click on that video if you want to learn more about hospice. We have several things about it. I hope that helps. But that is hospice care in a nutshell. Uh, it's different than home health, different than home care. All right, so those are the three areas that families get confused a lot, and patients and, and even uh, healthcare workers, doctors, they all get confused about the difference between home health, the difference between home care, and the difference between hospice care. Now, all of these are usually in the framework of your home, right? So your home could be your house, or it could be an assisted living facility, or an independent living facility, or a group home. These are all the places where someone resides. These are the areas that have care rendered for a patient or someone at home. So hope this helps. If you like this video, please make sure you like this video. I don't know where it is, where I'm supposed to click or like or subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, and stay tuned for more information uh, regarding Charlotte Health Services. Uh, our heart and our goal is to educate you and to help to make this healthcare industry less confusing so that you can navigate and care for your loved ones. Talk to you guys soon. See you next time.